Hi there, welcome to our channel. I'm Vic. I'm Vic. And we're Envy Board Gaming, continuing our top 100 with number 30 to 21. So I'll get it started. <clears throat> My number 30 for 2023 is Dinosaur World. I previously had uh, Dinosaur Island higher than yep. Dinosaur World. And then I played Dinosaur World again long ago and thought about it, really, when I'm making this list. And I do see the improvements that came with Dinosaur World. It's a different game, too. It's not the same. You're not putting... Uh, you are still building out your amusement park, but you're sort of moving with a Jeep in a different way. It turn, changes direction. And it, it's a bit, it's different of a game. You're still, you know, working on dinos, but it's just different. I appreciate that one a little more. I yeah. do like Dinosaur World, so I've come around. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. That's one we reviewed on the channel with Andrew and Sam. So yeah. it was a four-person review of that game, mm -hmm. the Dinosaur World. Yeah. All right. My number 30 is a dudes on a map game called Lords of Hellas. Lords of Hellas, a great game previously on my list at number 21. It sits here at number 30. Uh, just because, and it dropped because it's not a good two-player game. We tried it at two. There was, it, it was just underwhelming. That's all. That's yeah. the only reason it drops a little bit here, because I do love the game at four. Uh, we played it at four multiple times with different people, and I really love it. It looks great on the table. I love the action selection in this one. And uh, it's a game I have expansions that I need to try still. I have two expansions. That's how much I like it. Uh, yeah. Atlas and something else. And uh, it has a a fairly simple rule set, but it is it does have some convoluted parts to it that I, I'll have to relearn when we play it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Lords of Hell is a great dudes on the map, big minis game by Wicked Realms. Yeah, using my airbrush and some other painting tools to get that one painted because they're you know big size ones. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> my number twenty nine is a game you've mentioned uh, previously. It's Santa Maria. I love uh, the dice selection of it. I like the um, building out a, a t like it's I guess tile placement or a city building. Mm -hmm. I like putting that those pieces down. I find it interesting drafting the tiles and what one you're going to take when you spend uh, the resources for them and where you're what action are you going to take on the board when you're trying to compete with the conquistador mm -hmm. uh, track. It's just it's really fun. I like that game. That one jumped up the same like. Yeah. I don't know if that was in the top fifty before. I don't think that's, so. That's cool. Mm -hmm. A great game. All right, number 29 actually was 29 previously as well. So it stayed put. And this is a game that may be falling for other people, but it just, we don't play it that much. So it, I don't get sick of it at all. It's a game I love to bring out for a, co a cooperative hidden trader type game. Shadows over Camelot, mm. previously, previously 29, still 29. And this is one that if we played it too much, I think I would like, okay, it's underwhelming mm -hmm. because you can kind of see that, like, okay, it's going to drop. But the fact that we play it, if once a year at most, we play it pretty much, and maybe not even that, I love it. So I always want to keep playing it. I, I just It's one that you, it's easy to teach, too, which mm -hmm. is surprising because of how it looks on the table. And there's all these different things you can do, like this big, overwhelming board. If you're not a gamer, you'd probably feel a little overwhelmed. Yeah. Well, we've played this with people that are not gamers at all, really, and it worked because there's like, here's your options, you know. You can do this and that. Make sure everyone understands if they do draw the trader, this is how that works. Yeah. And it's not that bad. So mm -hmm. uh, a fairly easy teach, but it looks uh, like a big game. And, uh, yeah, fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely a fun game. Uh, 28 is uh, my choice. This game you've said before. It's colorful. It's a foul game. It's Trajan. Okay. Yeah. Colorful, huh? Uh huh. I like the, the little um, <laughs> cylinders, I guess, that okay. you're moving around in a in a what man that what is that meant? Uh, Mancala. Mancala. Yeah. I like that you're making those choices. I like the cookie looking bread. The one that looks <laughs> like. <laughs> I like that drawing. Yeah, I like the drawing of oh, it. Cookie looking bread. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's fun to choose the little every every part of it is fun, but I like that you're choosing your actions by how far you're moving, and that's going to pace the rounds faster. So it's going to make things speed up, and you're hoping like stop taking six, moving your thing six, man. Like I don't want to move on past this round because I don't have the stuff yet, you know. Because you can choose to keep moving that thing around and uh, further you you yeah. go. But yeah. anyway, yeah. I like that quicker. Yeah, mm -hmm. we played that. Yeah, we played it once with four players with uh, Tim and Alyssa. Um, I've never heard that called colorful, but I guess by definition, those little things are colored. So mm -hmm. colorful. Yep. Trajan. Very. All right, we're on to twenty eight. This one is new to the list. Twenty eight, and I've been raving about it for a while now. Uh, it's a game that we first played at Gen Con, and it's called Bamboo. 
Bamboo hasn't been mentioned yet, so it's got to be on this list. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I just love this game. Um, it's clean. It's fairly simple to teach. But it's such a nice, portable game. I love the art in the box. It speaks to me. I don't know the color scheme or something. I'm not sure what it is, but I just love that cover. It's probably a top 10 cover for me. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It just pops. And I just, and I keep saying this, I love that box size. I can get all of the games. As many games as I want that box size would be amazing. Because it packs a punch, and it doesn't look like, and when you see that box, that's going to be a very big game. Mm-hmm. The decisions are meaty. Um, you have to, even even things that you forget in that game. So even like Trajan, there's things, or Carpe Diem, there's things you forget. Um, this is something, that, there's things you forget. You like When you're putting those tiles out left and right, you forget that. You're like, yeah. oh, that's a big thing at the end. Mm-hmm. We want to be balanced here. I right. forgot all about that because I was doing other decisions. Yeah. Um, where you want to go in the uh, at the right, I don't remember what they call it, but influencing those certain people. When you're putting those uh, cylinders out or those uh, sticks, the incense, incense. Yeah. When you're putting those out, it's something you're like, oh yeah. Well, I want. I, I don't want. I want to win that majority, so I, I want to wait for them to do it first because they can do this action, and then they're going to put a bunch of sticks there. But you want to overcome that, and then you have all the action selections too. Yeah. That so there's there's plenty. It it, it packs a punch mm-hmm. for what it is. So and you get to push up bamboo. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it. It's cute. Number twenty seven is a game that. I uh, love the theme of just like I liked a game that I get mixed up with, and the game is the magnificent, um, really fun polyomino uh, aspect to the game. I have fun with the different shapes that you go for, depending on how far up you can move, um, how much you're going to put towards that action. The um, going around with your cart in the three circles. I mean that. I don't know what that is exactly. I forget what they call that. Mondale ish. Yeah. Um, just fun. And I love the artwork of it and it's set collection parts where you're trying to get certain objectives so that you can get more stuff. I don't know. It's so fun. I like the, uh, the game. Nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're sticking an adjacent theme. It's not really the same thing. But I guess because uh, alchemy is kind of BS. So it's going to be Trismegistus, the other T game. Another T game on the list. I uh, already had Tail to Walk In and Teletum was on my list. I don't think it made yours. Maybe it did. I think it did make yours at some point. I don't know if you have a heavier hundred there. But um, I haven't so said it yet. Trismegistus is one that is actually kind of complex. When you when you're teaching it, it doesn't make. It's not intuitive. Like right, the way it's moving, uh, your elements and stuff. And even the theme is kind of wonky. The art's awesome. I love the cards, the way they look, mm-hmm. the splashes of color on those. Uh, and the, the mechanisms are really fun. The dice that you're drafting, dice drafting is always a good thing to me. Yeah. Uh, then that's kind of, you're, you're kind of revolving your actions around what you select on your turn. Mm-hmm. Um, but fairly complex. So if you're not into complex games, uh, trace resistance might be one to, to bow out of, but it's a fun one. I love it too. Number 26 is a tea game, Sulkin. Nice. I love it. I want to paint the the wheels, the Mayan calendar. I think it looks so awesome painted. I've seen that. Mm. Uh, but it's cool the way the gears move around. There's corn accumulating. You can take some. You're feeding. Got to feed people. It's important. Um, I love the uh, the choices of where you're going to go. How long are you going to leave your worker there and and get better and better actions as you leave that and it spins around. Or you can you can. There's so many different ways to go in the game. I I uh, know you've played with the expansion, I think, before with it, unless I'm getting it confused with We Gen just Kanu. got that at Gen Con, so yeah, okay. we played once. Yeah. I um, so I don't have too much familiarity with the expansion. I think I focused mainly on the, on the main game, but I think it was well received when we played it at both at four and two. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's always, it's, it's not a very difficult rule set no. either. So I think that, um, it's just a great game. Place your workers or pull them away. Yeah. That's the key mechanism, right? Yeah. Hold them away if you want, or now you can't do you can't do both. You gotta pick one. So your action itself is very simple. Exactly, it doesn't get like bogged down where you're trying to play a card and you don't know what the card text means, and you gotta ask people all these icons. It's really not that way. No, this is yeah. the easiest team game to teach, and I don't think it. And it, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's much competition in that field. I think this is by far the easiest to teach. I can't think of one that yeah. even competes. So you got good pick, Zulkin, great worker placement type game. Oh, right. We're on to 26. This was probably my biggest mover of all of my 100. Uh, this one jumped the most, I believe. Um, I didn't look individually, but if off the top of my head, this has to be the biggest. This was previously 82. It is now 26. Whoa. 
Uh, yes, it did have to do with an expansion. This allowed us to play the game cooperatively, and we just played it. It's called Concordia. Ah. Concordia jumped big because of the options now I have. Yeah. I have different boards. I have the cooperative mode that we can play, <laughs> or we can play the base mode, which I'm trying to play soon. But we have been playing a little bit more cooperative of that game lately. Uh, a clean game, uh, one that your actions are listed right on your card, you know, and it's there's no luck in this game. What's lucky about it? I guess in the co-op when you're rolling dice, but when you're playing head to head, there's no luck in this game. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can't think of a, th a single thing that is lucky about this because your options are given, your options are played out there. That is random, but the game starts and what's random. There's nothing random. The board's already set. This is your board. You have to work with what was given. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing lucky about it. You start at the same spot. You have the same cards. You can pick which cards you want. If later in the game, that's your own accord. There's nothing luck about that. All the cards come out, too. Yeah. Like, card. you will see all of the cards in the Senate thing. Mm -hmm. That's how it ends. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, that's one of the end games, yeah. Yeah. Or building out all your things. But, yeah. So you'll never be like, oh, we didn't see these five cards when, ever. When people ask what are the best games of, without luck and that have a pack a punch, I think of Gugong and I think of uh, Concordia. <laughs> and people say Gugong has a die, too, but, I mean... That's just the die that shows what's going to... That's those just a die on yeah. top that you show what you want to aim for. That's not luck to me. Yeah, you don't have to do know. that part. Uh, that's just to get an extra worker, right? Because that's to get... Yeah, that's to get more points yeah. if you're trying to match those numbers. But you're still doing that. You're, those dice rolls aren't like, oh, that was lucky. I got a seven. No, yeah. you're picking. Yeah, anyway, uh, those two games, not not luck heavy at all. Super fun. Concordia. Concordia, great pick. And my pick for 25 is Gugong. Oh, ah! that's Gugong. Nice. Yeah, so it's funny you just mentioned it. Uh, Gugong, you've mentioned it already. What a fun sleeper game. You don't hear too many people talk about it. You have some cool, nice components to it. I like that. The uh, jade. Yeah, that's a good touch. Mm -hmm. um, I like that you added that. And I just always enjoy the the how different the game is each time, and the choices you make are always meaty, and you really have to consider, I really want to put this card down, because I know that you know the number showing at the top, he's going to pick that up for sure you have to kind of really plan it out what's going to happen with the cards you have in the in your hand and there's a lot to go for and uh you can do a different strategy each time so fun yeah that and the actions are fun except for the jade action which we just mentioned that one is kind of a filler you yeah. just go there and get a jade which can be a set type thing that mm -hmm. one is one that suffers from that it suffers from the thing we've been talking about lately like well, the throwaway action the jade is the throwaway action yeah in, uh, the other looks, action is super fun yeah at least it looks cool yeah at least the jade now is upgraded so mm -hmm. you want to go there and get the shiny greens yeah all right your 25 was gugong my 25 is a game that will be higher on yours i believe we're getting the expansion uh, eventually and uh, i want to say a new game of this type but i could be wrong i have to look at the, the campaign mm. i forget uh, it was instant back for me because it's Clans of Caledonia. Uh, Clans, this guy was a first-time designer. He hasn't come up with anything that recent before wow. this, before these things that he's releasing now. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's a great game. Uh, the reputation for this first-time designer made me want to buy whatever he's putting out. You know, it's like, oh, this guy, yeah, let's do it. Let's go again. Yeah. Because that was such a good first-time design. Mm -hmm. um, Clans is a really clean game. It's difficult to, it's not difficult to learn. It's difficult to master, really. Yeah. Uh, I know it's cliche, but just the way that the production works and timing out when you can do those contracts. Like, the production <laughs> after the rounds. Like, Man, I want to do it during the round. I want this, like. Yeah. And the money's tight. So you, tight. You cost yeah. money just to get those contracts at a certain point. At the beginning, you're getting money and the contracts. I don't know if uh, orders, whatever you want to call yeah, them. Yeah, they're free to fulfill, too, or they get you money. Yeah, yeah then, five. then it's neutral. Yeah. So, okay, I can still get them for free. And then it's like, okay, now it costs five, now it costs ten, now it costs fifteen. Like, man, this is getting really expensive to get these just to score your points toward yeah. the end. And the way that things produce, you're just building up and building up, and you, it, it really is uh, restrictive in certain ways. Not by rules. Well, I guess kind of by rules. Just the way the production works. Yeah. It's kind of like that. But... We have super fun every time we play. Yeah. And it scales. Really the well. economics of it is neat too. Like if he floods the market with bread, now the bread is not worth as much. You could, the buying and selling is cool when you're holding, you're producing in something and you go, okay, now I really don't need this anymore. I'm going to start selling it and then trying to get something else. But then you also have to upgrade the workers to do that. So you can't yeah. just like, I remember I thought I could just send them out. I'm like, wait, you're, you didn't buy those? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh. You need to get those. Yeah. So that's so fun. <laughs> 24 is Yokohama for me. I uh, remember we played it on a very small table on, at Snakes and Lattes uh, in Chicago. 
not Snakes and Lattes, another board game cafe yeah. in Chicago. And it was so fun. I love all the modules of it, like the style of the boards, how they lay yeah. out, um, moving the president and then having the other, um, ambassadors yeah follow you along and they're only you can only go so far of it and symbology is, is pretty clean and straightforward i have a lot of fun playing it i love that game so i yokohama yeah, it was fun when we had fun on uh board game arena as well mm -hmm. um and i've been slacking with my numbers here um Atlanta, caledonia was previously 19 now 25 and now we have one that was previously 14 and it is now 24 this is an Alexander Pfister game called Maracaibo. Maracaibo, I'm a sucker for multi-use cards, first of all. So it has resources on the cards. It has the abilities on the cards. It has values in the corner. Um, some people appear at different places on the map based on values. There's a lot of stuff going on on these cards, and that's the core of the game. Um, yes, you're moving around your ships and, and going to these different islands and doing things, but those cards are carry the game for me. Uh, Maracaibo is my favorite Alexander Pfister game. It, it does... Uh, it does exceed the Great Western Trail for me and a lot of other people, too, I think. Maracaibo was a lot of fun. So we are playing through the campaign, Alexander Pfister campaigns or whatever, but there's, it's still, it's just another excuse to play uh, Maracaibo, essentially. Mm -hmm. 23 is another tea game, and you mentioned it because you said it. I don't know if you've said it yet or if it was on your list. Oh, wow. Yeah, you said that. Taladum's this high. Yeah, it's Taladum. I like it, uh, even though the colors are difficult to distinguish for me, and I always have to say, is that really a yarn or a steel? What is that? Those two, yeah. Whatever it is. Why did you guys do the that? The blue and the gray. Yeah. They throw you off a what little bit. What the heck? Yeah. But I like that there's ways out of things. If you can give me a way, like, I can trade this for that, and then I can get out of it, like, when you need a certain thing and you can spend yeah. a bunch of money for it. Yeah. Um, the placement of where, where – is it a worker placement? I always forget. get it, like, twisted with what it is. But you put it um, – um, You're – it's like those actions from the die, the, the die yes, at the top left. Yes, exactly. So I like the dice selection. That I always get it confused. It, it is an action selection. So action selection type dice, of game. Yeah. I always enjoy doing that. And uh, the tension of if somebody's going to take something that you want, oh, that always thrills me. So Yeah, it's a, it's a great game. I'm surprised this is your, this high up, this to let them. It was on my 100, though. So I, I thought it was going to make your 100. We'll see. I'm surprised that it was that high, actually. Um, all right, number 23 <laughs> is a game that was previously 17. It was mentioned on this video by Victoria. Um, I don't know what number you had it, but you just adjusted it to be higher than its predecessor. That is Dinosaur mm. World. Dinosaur World, previously 17, now 23. Vic described it pretty nicely, but I'll go over just a, one thing that I find to be Unique to this, um, the way that your Jeep is moving it and you're going to do those actions because you're kind of planning out like a programming almost in a roundabout way where you're placing tiles out, you have a tile placement, and you can drive your Jeep in this one phase to trigger actions on those. And they get weaker because the people in your Jeep are bored of seeing these certain things. And it's thematic in that way. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to, if you're driving up to the security office, well, that's not going to be very fun. It's not going to be, <laughs> you're not going to get a lot of amusement as you go through that. You might get other things, but not, amusement's not one. That's that's a key part that when you're getting your cost and benefit of these different tiles, it's yeah. super fun when you're drafting them out there uh, when you do that action, that phase. It is very um, phase-oriented, just like yeah. just like uh, Dinosaur Island, but I don't mind that at all. Uh, I think Dinosaur World is quite a bit better. Uh, not, not substantially, but I think Dinosaur Island, I have uh, like 10 spots below this or 9. Uh, I love this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the world. Good pick. Good theme. Mm -mm. 22. <laughs> 22. It looked like a 20. I don't know why I did that. Uh, 22 is another tea game. Whoa. What's going on here? <laughs> a lot of them and time. it's one you just said, and you were talking about alchemy yeah. and art. It's Trismegistus. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought it. There was a cat, and I heard people talking about it in one of these Facebook groups. And I asked you a couple of them, like, you ever heard of Trismegistus? You ever heard of this? And then I think I was in Canada. I think it was the other one I got in Canada uh, from a small outlet store that had um, had a good price on it. So I, I bought it, and it had a black cat on it. So cute. And I think I taught it. I'm pretty sure I taught Trismegistus. Another game that's great that you taught. Yeah. Hey. So it's fun. The dice. You know, I love drafting dice i really enjoy that too like nick does and it, it's fun it's uh, satisfying to move those um elements 
uh, on along your lab and upgrading them. I think that's, I don't know, a fun part of it. The art is nice. The colors are cool. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it feels like a different game every time I play it, though. So this is this is going to be the 10 for the tea games. This is just the row of tea games right here. They fit into this area of yeah. the 20s. You know? Yeah, it's strange that, that we bo our minds came to that. All right, let's change that up. Number 23, okay. pre no, 22, sorry, previously 15. Number 22, previously 15. This is a game that uh, I don't know if you taught, but you bought it. I don't know who taught this one. It's been a while. Um, this is one that you picked up for a good price when it was hot, and this is uh, Gloomhaven. Mm. A cooperative game, dungeon crawler. Uh, you already know about it. I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you've at least heard of it, minimum, um, that you're trying to fight these baddies. And the, the cards on it, you're using the tops and the bottoms. Um, you're trying to uh, get through these different... There's tons of scenarios in this one. There's even expansions. Uh, now there's Jaws of the Lion. I still have that shrink because we haven't gotten through the base game. Uh, that's one that you kind of want to just set up on a table for a week and then not remove it. Yeah. We don't have that going on yet. Eventually, I think we will, mm -hmm. uh, where we could do those big games like Gloomhaven and knock them out eventually. Uh, but we have not gotten close. Really, we've probably played it 40 times, and we are still not even halfway through. So uh, Gloomhaven, a lot of fun, though, when we do decide to play it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I have fun, and there's some times that we have had some real laughs, and it's also difficult. It's not an easy game. I don't want to power through these dungeon type of games where it's just simple to get, and you're just always winning, winning. Like You, you decide how easy you want to yeah. be, right? Well, we've so, made it hard, <laughs> or you have. Yeah, me at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 21 is Paladins of the West Kingdom. I love that you're doing really your own thing. Nobody's throwing you in jail like architects. They can't round you up and do that to you. They can take stuff, I guess, that you wanted, like when the, those, um, the king's orders are flipped over and there's those one spots and something hot and juicy comes out. And I just know it's going to be a rush for us to get out there and like get two meeples for one or do something like that, right? Um, but... I love that there's so much to consider and uh, you never do the same. I never go through the same motions. Like sometimes if I play a game and I learn that I, I find myself doing the same order, I, I don't think that's so fun. Like if I'm always doing the same stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, but not this game because you are always thinking about what am I going to even upgrade? Am I going to bother with that action? Am I going to try to do something else? And, uh, it's, it, and then the choice of even the card of what meeples you're going to get. And what ability you'll have. Um, this game does it excellent, where you never know, right from the jump, what you're going to pick. Unlike a game that was, like, let's say, my one, my number 100 that just made the list, Ultimate Railroads. You mm -hmm. know you want the money. You know you want the worker, or whatever it might be. Like, yeah, let's start this game up this way. Yeah. You don't know that in Paladins at all. Uh, you just see the situation and what, what is going to work for you mm -hmm. this game. You're not partial to anything going into it. You know? Yeah. And I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, that's a... You have a 21, which is an amazing game. I'm surprised it's not, because this was in your top 10 uh, last time. <laughs> and you haven't mentioned Viscounts yet, so I think that there's a swap that just happened. So uh, Paladins coming in at number 21. All right. For me, number 21, we're going to go back to our theme here, Zalkin. Zalkin is my 21. Vic has mentioned it as a T game uh, that is on her list already. I love Zalkin. We were just explaining this game, so I won't go into detail at mm -hmm. all. But I like games that give a twist on worker placement. Now, this was before all the other two games we mentioned, but it wasn't the first one we played. We played Tale to Walk in first. Yeah. This was like supposed to be the predecessor, the, the one that came before, sorry, of uh, Zalkin. Yeah. And normally, when you play a game, the one that you played first is the one you're going to grow attached to. I find this better than Zulk, uh, mm -hmm. than Tale to Walken. I find Zulkin a little better, and I've seen people that like that that played Zulkin first and like Tale to Walken better. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what to make of that. Yeah. Um, maybe they just like the big spanning board of Zul of Tale to Walken. I keep saying the wrong one. Uh, maybe like that, the way it looks, all that. It does look a little better than Zulkin, maybe without the painted stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because you got the pyramid. On right. It. It it's all kinda, gray it's right cool. in the center with those. If you don't paint it's it, kind of cool looking. Uh, Zulkin, but it has the gears, so I don't know. Now you're now you're, now you're kind of it's kind of confusing, especially when the gears painted. And the corn, the corn sucks. <laughs> when you upgrade the corn, um, Zulkin, a lot, a lot of fun. This is like just straight up worker placement. It's probably my number one, just just for that mechanism alone. Hey, what's your favorite? As a matter of fact, we did a favorite worker placement, yeah. and it was number one. 
uh, just for straight up word placement. Yeah, you can watch that list. Um, I think it does just does it so great. It's so clean, and your actions are getting better, like Vic said, as you lead those workers out there. But you want to pull them off because that's when you get your stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. It is really fun, and I held off on playing this one for quite a while. Knowing that people liked it, it looked like like a burden. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's not. A burden. It's not. I know. That's how I felt too. Because I was going to say that when I was waiting to say that exact thing, that we didn't buy it right away. I saw people whispering about it. People would yeah. talk about it, and I'm like, you yeah, see yeah. The gears, you're like, oh goodness. I yeah. Don't know. I don't know if I want that. People liked like people were saying that Tail to Walking was better. I was like, oh, okay, well, I already have Tail to Walking. I guess I don't need this one. Mm -hmm. No, I like this one better. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should play this Andrew and Sam. Yeah. Because um, it'll be fairly easy to teach. I think they might really like it. Yeah, Maybe. I think so. And they got skulls in it. I like the skulls. <laughs> All right. right. 20. Oh, you got no. No, we're done. 21. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> almost, much. almost done, Goose. We're saving that for next week. Yeah, you didn't see it, did you? No. Okay. I didn't see any. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for another segment of our top 100 updated list for 2023. Not necessarily games from 2023, but just overall updates from a couple years ago. We did a list. This is a better list for me, I think. And there's so many games. He's talking about my paladins at 21. What am I supposed to do, man? We got so many games. I, I had to get, it had to fall, but it's nothing personal paladins. Don't worry. Anyway, let us know in the comments below if you've been following along, what games you found in common with us, or what games you rank in this section. And like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more great videos. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.